I would say that physical attraction was his smile. He just has a really cute smile. <laughs> I also like the fact that he was just such a hard worker when I met him. And he still is. He's a hard worker and, and has really strong work ethic. And I think that's what did it. Yeah, well, I, maybe that's what it was. I was attracted to him because uh, he was my boss for a short period of time. <laughs> but I was actually hired first, and he was hired to come in and be the boss. So I, According I still, to my uh, boss, I was hired to come in and date her. Yeah, that's true. I haven't heard that story before. That's Katie uh, Freeland. She's our ch uh, kids, our South Kids pastor. You've got to hear that story. Say, hey, Katie, tell me more about that story. Thank you for coming today. I'm Kenny Davis, lead pastor. Welcome to our church, connecting people to God and each other through a genuine community experience. You should have experienced that today as you came in. Um, there was a new person that came came through the parking lot today, and I thought it was someone else. Okay, and I and I and I yelled, "Hey, big time! How are you?" And uh, as this person got closer, I, I realized this was not who I thought it was. And uh, I'm like, oh, gosh, I thought you were. And she's like, oh, I thought you were just calling me big time. I mean, you know, and I'm like, yeah, well, you know what? You are big time. And that's, see, that's the thing. That's what we want to have here. Um, if you are a first time, you should have been with love when you came in, got a gift. We have a lunch right after church. Everybody, everybody should be coming to this lunch because it's an opportunity for us to get to know each other. You, we always want to, you know, figure out how can we get to know each other better. Our lunch is a way to do that. We call it our eat and greet right over in the Life Center right across the ways. It's free for all of our first timers and for anybody who's a regular. It's only five bucks to eat, three bucks for kids, 10 and under. Um, super easy. Bathrooms in the back. There's a baby room in the back, nursing room. Everything's in HD. You cannot miss it. Hey, we're mixing things up a bit. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here on time. Um, sometimes you just want to mix it up. You know, sometimes we're just like, hey, it gets to be a little religious. You know what I'm saying? It gets to be a little bit religious. And we said, you know, let's mix it up a little bit. And plus, we wanted to get your tails here on time to church as well. We're in a very, very special series. If you're watching this online this week, thank you. I'm waving at you now saying thank you so much for making the time to sit on your couch with your spouse or to sit and uh, wherever you are at work or wherever you're in your car and you're watching this. We are in a huge series for our church, not just for married people, but for unmarried people, people who've been divorced, people who are struggling, young people, and it's called From This Day Forward. When I've done weddings, or in my, even in my own wedding, you take vows, and in, in the vows, there's a part in there where you say, from this day forward, and all the stuff that happened beforehand, and you may be, you know, 50 when you get married. My grandmother was just married at 70, 77. You may be tw or in the 20s, but still, guess what? You still had a past, and you still had things that you struggled with. And we say these words, from this day forward, from this day forward, I'll honor you, I'll love you from this day forward. Well, here's what we find out, is that even in the midst of marriage, we have to continue to say that phrase, don't we? That we go through things where things just happen, and we have to say, man, okay, we just went through this, but from this day forward, from this day forward, we're going to keep the covenant we have. We're going to keep the commitment we have. If you're unmarried in here today, we're giving you some amazing tools. I was telling, I, I talked to three or four unmarried people last week after church, and I was just saying to them, and they're just talking about, man, this is, this is good stuff. And I'm saying, man, I'm so envious of you right now. I'm so envious because you haven't gotten married yet, and you're hearing all of this. I'm so envious, and you're like, well, why are you so envious? I don't have a wife or a husband yet. I'm like, no, no, no. No, because now you're hearing, you're, you're like getting these tools that are incredible. And if you're married, you're understanding that, man, I, we, maybe we need to renew some commitments in our life. Maybe for us to have the marriage that we really want to have, we have to renew some commitments in our life. 50% of marriages end in divorce. Young people even know that. 50% of marriages end in divorce. And then the other ones are at times miserable. We're so busy with schedules and struggling and chaos and stuff that we just, it just gets to be miserable. So in this series, what we're looking at, we're, man, we're just saying, how can we come together? Last week we said, hey, we need to, what we need to do is whether we're unmarried or you're married, we've got to start with seeking God. And I think every one of you that has half of heart or half a brain that is sitting in here today, 
you realize, you're like, you know, that, that seems so simple, but it's so true. That if we would just pray for one another, if we just say, let's, let's do that together. There was a young couple that I, I saw at lunch last week. Young couple together, I say, listen, what, a, what an amazing principle this is for you. You're not married yet or anything else, but if you put God in the center of your relationship and you move to the center to where God is, how, don't you get closer together as well? And you're getting closer to God. You're seeking God. That principle doesn't change when you're, when you're really married. But let's put God on the outside. And you feel like you're coming closer together, but you're coming away from God. Last week we said just seek God together in prayer. And I know this week maybe you started off, maybe you started off strong. You're like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that. I'm going to text some prayers. And then maybe the busyness got you again. Hey, you miss a day. That's okay. You don't stop just because you miss a day with brushing your teeth or flossing or whatever. You don't not brush the next day, do you? Like, you know, no, I'm back on it because my breath stinks. And this marriage stinks right now. So I better get back on it and keep going. So last week we just talked about how with prayer, it creates great spiritual intimacy. If you're not doing that, if you're not doing that, you're like, man, it's kind of weird. But when you do that, and you're like, man, there's something special. I told the story of Christy praying for me and how it created like this great intimacy when I was having a crummy week. And that spiritual intimacy creates intimacy in other areas of your life, other areas of your life. You know what I'm saying? Boys, the men gets being played a little bit more often, you know? Intimacy. You're like, whoa, yeah, man, that, that's all from prayer. Well, God leads all that makes all that happen. So today, as we're moving forward, as we're moving forward in this series, we're learning, here's what we're learning. We're learning how to fight fair in our marriage. We're learning how to fight fair in our marriage. It's so important for us to hear this because for us, many of us, you know, I mean, uh, how many of you have fought over something just, just, just insignificant and stupid? Just, yeah, yeah, very good. Hands up, raise them up, raise them up. How many of you fought on the way to church? Go ahead. Just, you can, you, all right. How many of you are sitting by yourself right now? <laughs> you're like, you're like, whoa, Jennings, how come you're sitting on the opposite side? That's, that's very weird. No, um, no, but we do, don't we? I mean, it's just, it, it happens. That's the thing. We think that, we think that in unmarried, married, you have to hear this. We think that if we fight, that's unhealthy. No, it's not. No, that's not what it is. If we fight, it's how we fight. It's how we fight is what's important. I think we just need to learn how to fight. See, many of us, we, we, um, we uh, never learned. Let's be honest. Our parents didn't walk us around the block. I've, to, I've told this to many married couples before, and you think, I'm, he just says that generally speaking. And I've talked to many, many married couples who never were taught how to be married. Many of us, I mean, the young people, how many of you, your parents are really saying, hey, man, come on, hey, Chris, Come on, let's, and maybe this is happening. Let's walk around the block. I want to talk to you about being a husband. We, some of us growing up in my generation, I'm sorry, we just didn't learn it. We had to just sit and maybe watch it, see it. But you know what? My parents, they didn't really fight around us. Yeah, they may pull the whole, let's go into the bathroom and turn the shower and the sink on, you know? You know, that whole move. And then there's the other side where some of you are saying, no, my, oh no, my parents fought. My parents fought and they just yelled and screamed in front of us. But for some of us, we just haven't learned, right, how to fight the correct way. And for, when most of us say, well, it's just saying sorry, right? If I just say sorry, I, I found some pictures this week that I want to show you. They're pretty cool. I'm going to look at them with you because they're kind of kind of cool. Okay, look, this guy right here, he, this is a good way to say sorry, right? He stuck the cutting board um, on the oven and burned it through there. And so then he leaves it and writes a sweet note. That is just good. See, it's, it's a tool for fighting fair. Look at this. What's the next one right here? Oh, right here. I'm sorry, Matt. I can't afford for both of us to use my face products. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, interesting way to communicate there. Right there. How about this one? This is good for Joel. Beware. Carol, I am, so, I am seriously so sorry. I couldn't kill it. I was so scared. It's so big. Look at that. Sp cup over the spider. And then finally, this is probably the, my favorite right here. I'm sorry I slapped you in the face twice when I was drunk. I mean, a, please, a gift of bacon. What an offering. What a peace offering. If, there, if there's going to be a peace offering, it's like the Tommy boy, you know. Is, is my face red? Is it, you know, no, it's not red. Here's some bacon, you know. No, here's some bacon. But, you know, the reality of it is, the re, and you young people, unmarried, you've got to hear this. 
the reality of it is, is that all couples will fight. All couples will fight. Why? Because we're sinful. That's just how it is. That's just the church word for it, if you want it, is that we're just sinful. We're born selfish. Babies say mine first, don't they? We're born that way. That's how we are. All couples will fight. But what we need to understand is that help, healthy couples fight fair. Healthy couples fight fair. If you hear something today and someone says water cooler, hey, what was church about? Man, healthy couples? He just said healthy couples fight fair. Unhealthy couples fight dirty. They fight with low blows and accusations. And my last wife didn't do it that way. Or my other husband would take us to this place. Or my mom cooked it this way. Ooh. Oh, come on, someone say, oh, dang, in here. Oh, dang, he just went there. Healthy couples, listen, healthy couples fight for resolution. They fight for resolution. Unhealthy couples fight for victory. I'm going to figure out a way I'm going to win this. Unhealthy couples have to win. Healthy couples say, man, we got to find resolution. In fact, there's a great study by a guy named Dr. John Gottman. He's a marriage specialist. He studied couples who fought for 16 years. And what he could do is that he could take you and your spouse, he could take you and your spouse into a room, say, okay, here's what some of the issues you struggle with. He could watch you for five minutes on how you fight. For five minutes, he could watch you for, on how you fight. And to a 91% probability, 91% probability, could predict whether you would get a divorce or not. Marriage specialist at 16 years did the whole thing and he could tell by the way that we fight for five minutes whether or not we would get a divorce. It's not, how, it's not if you're going to fight, we are going to fight. It says couples, are we going to seek God in the midst of our fight? Are we going to seek God in the midst of our fight? So James, let's look at the Bible here, okay? Um, Bible verse, uh, we're looking here, James 1, 19 to 20, the brother of Jesus probably had, you know, knew the stuff, knew what he was talking about. He called himself a bond servant of Christ, the brother of Jesus. He said, man, I'm close. I know what's going on here. Let me give you something you can hold on to today. If you're like, I need some scripture to hold on to, I'm giving it to you right now, and we're gonna work through it together. James 1, 19 and 20, listen to this. It says, everyone, everyone, Okay? Not just some of you are saying, well, I'm good, I'm fine. No, he, James said, okay, for those of you who think you are all it. No, everyone, everyone should be quick to, somebody say it with me, should be quick to what? Listen. Whoa, is that hard to say for anybody? Come on, let's say it together with passion. Work with me. Thank you very much. Everybody should be quick to listen. And what else? We should be slow to, that's right, many of you need this, slow to speak. That's right. Slow to become angry, for a man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. So many of you are saying, okay, then you, then you got with the righteous word and all stuff, and I'm not sure. No, no, that's what you desire. That's what you stood across from your spouse, your future spouse, when you made vows in front of them to the covenant of God, you stood across from them and said, that's the kind of life that you are striving for for them. Under God, bowing to God. And so when we read this, we're saying, man, James is just challenging us on how we deal with each, other, with each other in our relationships. You're sitting here today saying, man, I walked into a marriage series. What the heck is going on? This is for everybody. This is for everyone on how we deal with each other in relationships. I want you to watch, though, as we look at James 1.19, and let's just break this down. How one verse inspired by God in Scripture <clears throat> can change everything for us, unmarried or married. So here's three rules I want, to, I want to share, okay? And you have booklets today. If you don't have a marriage booklet, this is huge to have, very important to have. We gave them out last week. We have a table in the back where you can pick up your booklet. Don't be embarrassed right now. I'm giving you full get up, go. You can strut. You can do what you want. Just make sure you have a marriage booklet. In this booklet, there's places for notes, follow along, bulletin. Thank you for strutting, Brady. That made me feel better. There's devotions in here. Young people, you, do, you need one too. Don't stop at the donuts. There's devotions in here. Each day you can say, man, okay, maybe I'm not with my spouse or whatever. Or maybe my spouse, spouse doesn't care about any of this, but I'm going to become a better spouse. And in the booklets there is a devotion. If you're just like visiting, you're like, I'm not going to take their booklets. There's bulletins. 
sitting in your seats. Follow along with me today, all right? First thing we have to do is that we need to stop. We need to stop. We need to stop when we're in a fight and things are escalating, things are getting high, things have already been said. We have to stop, and we have to stop and listen carefully. Stop and listen carefully. Many of us, again, we haven't seen this. We haven't seen this. You're just like, well, I don't have a model for this. Like, I, I, what I saw was I saw a mom who just nonstop never let my dad talk. But this is all I saw. So this is what I do. Or I'm, I saw a dad who just never, ever let my mom get a word in edgewise. But here's what the Bible, here's what the brother of James is writing, saying that if you want a, a, the righteous life or the righteous marriage that God desires, then in the midst of what, when it's all cooking up, stop. And listen carefully. James 1.19 is very clear. Everyone should do what? Say it aloud. Be quick to what? Come on, be passionate. Quick to listen. But what we're often quick to do is we're quick to speak. We are quick to speak because we want our opinion heard. We want to talk so much that we want them to listen. We're quick to argue back. We're quick to make a point. We're quick to throw in a low blow. Boom, kick in the shin. We're quick to do that. And again, you, this morning, as we're looking at this, you cannot let the power of how simple this idea is pass you by as you're looking for some, this, some great theological note today. You cannot let the power of simplicity pass you by as you're listening to this. When we start to fight, we've got to stop. And we really need to just listen. Listen carefully. Proverbs 18.2 says it this way. I love this. <clears throat> it says... A fool, someone say fool. fool. A fool finds no pleasure, no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinions. All right? I'm a football coach, and we get our line up, and we get them together. And what we do is we get them down, and we teach them that the other team, you know what the other team's trying to do? And it doesn't matter. They're eight years old, whatever, up to the NFL. They're trying to get you to jump off sides. If they can get you to jump off sides, first of all, you are going to give you know, them more yardage because you get a penalty for it, a penalty, but you also look like a fool doing it. You are the only one moving. Your whole line did not move when they said, ready, set, Omaha, and you jumped off sides. And then, you know, they show the dope on TV, right? When they're like, yeah, yeah. Offsides, number 77, and the dope's like, you know, he's like walking around, he's like, oh, no, I'm the dope, you know. And we teach our boys, even at eight years old, that we teach them, you wait till the ball moves. You stay on sides. You stay on sides. Because they are trying to get you to jump off sides. And when you do, when you get off sides, when you jump off sides, you look like a fool. Well, guess what? The enemy that we are dealing with, he wants you to jump off sides. He doesn't want you to be on sides. He wants you to just keep airing your own opinions because he knows when you do, you will be a fool. He doesn't want you to have a marriage with wisdom. He wants you to be a fool. He doesn't want you to be on sides with your spouse. He doesn't want you to be on sides with your future spouse. He doesn't want that. He wants you to be a fool. And a fool is like, hey, I don't really care about what you're saying. I'm, I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking. I don't care about what you're saying. It, I don't really value that. I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking. But I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm just going to give it, give it this all to you. But see, what we often do in fights, instead of being on sides, what are we? We're off sides in our fights. We're not trying to understand the other person. We just want to be heard. And that's foolish. That's what the scripture says. Like, I'm just, just a messenger, really. Scripture just says, man, that, that, I can't tell you. And not a person in here wants to be foolish. You don't. You aspire to be, oh, I'm a great businessman. Oh, I'm, I'm an amazing house mom, whatever. I'm, I'm amazing. I'm fool. And the Bible says, well, if you do these things in your number one investment, your marriage, then you are actually stupid. You're foolish. So the second thing here, Scripture teaches us as we're looking at this, James, it says, we have to do this. We have to guard our words faithfully. We have to guard our words faithfully. Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to what? That's right, quick to listen 
and slow to speak. When you are slow at methodical at anything, aren't you careful? Aren't you careful? If, if you're slow and methodical in how you speak when you're, in, when, when you're in an argument, then you're probably careful with your words. You're careful with your words. So we have to guard our words faithfully. Proverbs 21, 23 says it this way, and you can look it up yourself. It says, watch your tongue. Watch your tongue and keep your trap shut. Watch your tongue. and Okay, I'll just say what it says. Keep your big mouth shut. Watch your tongue and keep your big mouth shut. And what will happen? You will stay out of what, young people? That's right, man. Doesn't that work in class? It does, man. Just, hey, watch your tongue. Watch your tongue. Keep your big mouth shut. And it'll keep you out of trouble. Doesn't that work in marriages? Doesn't that work in, a, doesn't that work in relationships when we're like, man, I want to say this right now. I want to bring this out. I want to say this. For one, don't use this verse when you're fighting, by the way. Okay, that's important. You're like, well, I'm going to use some scripture right now. Proverbs 21, 23, shut your mouth. Right there. Not very good. You didn't get that from me, all right? I think what we have to do is ask ourselves this question. Should this be said right now? Whatever's coming out, the filter. Some of us got broken filters, all right? Some of us have uh, mentally disabled hamsters in your head that don't know how to work the wheel, you know? They're just like, oh, I don't know how to do this thing, you know, and then you just say what you want out of your mouth. Your filter's broken. You got to work the filter, which means this. Should this be said right now? All right, Christy and I, early in marriage, she had this thing, um, has this thing, where she wants to get the house frantically cleaned when our family is coming over. You know how dumb I thought this was, is, was, when I was early in marriage? I'm like, my, are you, my mom's coming out, she wiped my butt, are you kidding me? That's weird to think right now, but she, listen, she, she, I don't care about my mom, she knows all the dirt, you know, and your mom's coming, mean, your family's coming over, and we're frantically running around trying to clean this house, and you know, and this is early on, we're having this, you know, you know, of course, while I'm holding the vacuum or whatever, and I'm like, well, this is, man, and I said, I'll never forget it, should this be said, no, it probably shouldn't, but it did be said, and I said, you got problems, oh, Shaniqua. Oh, man, and I, if you think Christy doesn't have any Shaniqua, you know what I'm saying? She was like, oh, you said I have problems. You know, she's like, kick the vacuum out of my hand, you know. You know? And so from then on, I figured out, okay, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, you know, and, you know but we, we actually communicated about it later on. But I, I, in my mouth, I'm like, I probably should not have said that, that you have problems. It was like an oh, no moment, right? And sometimes what we do is we have to ask ourselves the question constantly in marriage. This isn't like early in marriage. Like, no, it's like now. I'm like, hamster, come on, wake up. Now, seriously, filter. Is this going to work? Because it's coming down. It's coming down. And it's ready to come out. And I'm like, you know, swallow it back. Because should it be said right now? Should it be said right now? I think many of us have to ask that question. Should the things that I want to say be said right now? But how about this? What if we, in our marriages, not in the midst of the fight, in the midst of, of the fight that we're having, we say, no, it shouldn't be said right now. Let's, let's temper this down a little bit. We're, remember, again, we're slow. We're quick to listen, slow to speak. Slow to speak. And we say, maybe not right now. We do checkups in everything, don't we? You check up your vehicle. Don't you? you say, oh, man, I got to get a checkup on my vehicle, man. Get a check. You do job evaluations at your job. You don't do job evaluations while you're, while you're being fired, do you? Then everybody, just, it's just, you know, hey, come on in, you know, Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock. Yeah. You come in, you have an evaluation. Of, you're just talking about it. In the spring, we maintain our lawn equipment, people. We go out in the, oh, I got to change the oil and do these things. Why not our marriages? But how do we have that? That's what you're saying. Well, how do you do a marriage checkup? How about when you're not fighting at all? When you're not fighting at all, you just, you just chill out and you just talk about the things that can maintain and benefit your marriage. At night, when the kids going crazy, get them to bed. People, put the kids to bed. All right? <clears throat> we let them little babies, crazy demons run around crazy and then guess what? 
We finally get them to bed. It's like, oh my goodness, I'm going straight to bed. And then there's, guess what? No time. There's no time. And some of us are like, oh, we're not getting along anyway. I don't really want there to be time. I just want to put the babies to bed, you know, and then we'll just go to sleep. I'm saying that's a bunch of crop. Because you put the babies to bed and then you have a time right there that can be your marital checkup. A time when you ask the question, really seriously, what are the, what are, what's, what's something, what are the three things that I do that bless you? What are the three things I do that really help you? Some of you are saying that jerk doesn't do anything to help me. You know, you're like, I don't have three things. Okay, find one thing. And in the marital checkup, when there's no fighting, you find one thing that, that this person does that's helpful. And you know what it does? It builds momentum in, in, a, in a safe conversation. There's no, there's no arguing about anything. No, 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 you're not driving anywhere. There's no craziness. Kids aren't in the back peeing everywhere. No, you're like, no, everyone's fine. And now you're just talking. Unmarried people, get this. As you're glossing over right now, I think that's not for me. No, this is for you. And I'm envious for you that you could hear this right now because you can take this and say, man, let's start talking about this now in our dating relationships. Getting a checkup. What are the things? Because it builds, I'm telling you, it builds you know, and, and men, I know we are we're like, oh, man, let's just watch our show. I want to watch our show. Let's sit down. We don't need to talk and watch our show. No, you need to take 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Just pause it. There's a pause button on the DVR. It is from Jesus himself. All right. Pause, pause the remote, pause it. And then in that moment, I promise you, it could change everything. It's a marital checkup. Put the kids to bed. So develops that. Stop to listen carefully. Stop to listen carefully. Guard your words faithfully. And then finally, if you're taking notes, write this down. We're going to learn to handle our anger righteously. Handle our anger righteously. This is so important because many of us think, oh man, I can't get angry. I don't want to get angry. My dad got angry. I don't want to be like my dad. My mom got angry. I don't want to be like my mom. Blah, 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 blah. I don't want to be angry. James 1.19 says this. Slow to, quick to listen, slow to speak. And what else? Slow become angry, slow to become angry. Listen, there's some things that we've just got to let go, don't we? Like there's some things, come on people, married people, all of us, there's some things we just got to let go. All right, the hair in the drain, guess what? There's going to be hair in the drain. Let's seriously, hair in the drain. Okay, undies he leaves in the living room. Come on, really? That's not me. I don't do that. Don't, don't even think that's me. But, you know, it's like, seriously, some of the stuff, we just got to just laugh about it and say, come on, let's, let's, let's let that go. But then we get angry, though, at times. And the Bible actually doesn't say it's bad to, be, to get angry. You know that? Because we think that. I got to be perfect. Don't be angry. We keep it in, pent it in, you know, years and years and years. Finally, you know, and then you're just, Boom! And the Bible doesn't say that. It's, it's how we handle our anger, right? Isn't it how we handle our anger? Ephesians 4.26, I love this. You got to listen to this. It says, in your anger. So Paul immediately to the, to the church, he says, okay, now, you're going to be angry. So in your anger, do not sin. Just in your anger, you're going to be angry, but do not sin. In your anger, do not sin, but do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. So you're going to be angry. But he says, but in your anger, do not sin. Do not sin. And don't let the sun go down on this. Now, if you're sitting here today and you're like, what's the one thing? I want to take the one thing. I want some of you to get this one point today because this is huge. Because some of us are sitting in marriages right now that started with the one night. It started with the one night where we didn't resolve it. And now we're years into complexity. And I, and I understand that. But from this day forward, from this day forward, we've got to resolve our stuff before we go to bed. This isn't just a tip from a pastor. This is, this is the word of God saying, in your anger, don't, don't let it happen. Don't, don't let it happen where you go to sleep angry and separately. Matter of fact, I would say this with one million percent passion today is don't go, to, don't go to bed separately at all. Don't go to bed separately at all. Well, she doesn't like the TV on, and I like to watch TV. No, 
you, you, she can lay on your lap on the couch and while you watch your, your television show. Then you both go to bed together. Some of you are you're blown away right there. You're like, oh, there's no way he's getting into my business like that. No, I'm getting into your business like that because I've seen major problems happen. Major problems happen in marriages where people went to bed separately. Oh, you go to bed, honey. You go to bed at nine. I go to bed at midnight. You go to bed, honey. That's fine. I'm going to work till 2 a.m. Major problems. Not to mention the unresolved anger that, that, that happens and the bitterness. So I would say that today. If you're like, I need the one thing, I'm, I'm, I'm busy, whatever, give me the one thing. Don't go to bed separately anymore. Figure it out. Because here's what the Bible tells us. It says, do not give the devil a foothold. Don't give the devil a chance to get his claws in on your marriage. Because when you go to bed angry, when you go to bed angry, the enemy knows, I got my claws in this now. Because if you're unmarried, let me, I mean, you know how it works. Don't we know, we assume the position, don't we? Don't we assume the position? Check this out, I got a few pictures to show you. Okay, so what do we do? We assume, we assume the position where, okay, now, you know, we're looking at those of you who are married, you know what I'm talking about. She faces one wall, and you face the other. And the, don't, the butt doesn't touch. Don't, don't even think that, no, I, we're going to get a butt on this. No, no, it doesn't touch. Wall, wall, right? And then, then you know, maybe one, one of them is like, oh, let me sit up. Let me sit up. I'm going to huff in a little bit. Where the other one's laying down, just, no, I'm going to, oh, man. And we got any huffers in here? Huffers? Come on. Any huffers? Anybody who, anybody who just, you know, just kind of says, well, I'm not going to go to sleep. I'll just sit here and, you know, I'll cross my arms. I'll get up and go to the bathroom a couple times. I'll come back. We have that, don't we? And then, boy, I'm going to tell you, that, if you can't get past that, then what does it do? The next thing you know, you're rocking in what? Oh, boy, you got the separate beds now. You're like, oh, dang, how did this happen, man? Over me getting the wrong milk? Really? Now I'm in separate beds. This isn't good. I'm rocking separate beds. But listen, but when you resolve, when you resolve your anger before the sun goes down, many of us know what makeup happens. You know what I'm saying? Like makeup, right? You resolve your anger. It's just, you know, great, man. You're like, oh my goodness, this is good. And then listen, young people, unmarried people, when you resolve your anger before you go to bed, the bed is used for other things, right? Right? Some of you are nasty. I mean, come on, look, 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 this picture right here, right here. How sweet is that? Yeah, Mark's like, yeah, that's sweet, that's sweet right there. Because that's after years and years of figuring it out, man. The bed's for cuddling, man. The bed's for cuddling. It's not for fighting. Okay, so in your anger, do not sin. Do not sin. Someone say, do not sin. So when you're angry, do not react. Respond, okay? In your anger, do not react. Respond, respond. So I know, listen, I know that there's many marriages in here that are represented. And it's, this is, it's not a pastor thing where we say, I know you, you have a few problems. No, some of us may have the problem. Like, man, I don't like his driving. It gets on my nerves. I don't like the hair in the drain. That's fine. I don't like that I caught him looking at inappropriate websites the other day. I don't like that she cheated on me with my best friend. We're all represented in these marriages. It would be a fool for me to think that I, that I don't understand that and know that. But you know what? We have a God, as Jameson was reminding us, we have a God who is greater than all of those things. In Scripture, it says that all things, all things are possible with God. That's what we have to know today. And you may be a person in here that saw marriages in front of you corrode, and to be destroyed, and you think that's how it goes, that's not how it goes. That's not the design. And I wanna share with you some quick warning signs that we have to hear today. And if you have these, then help's needed right now. Help is needed right now. And you can write these down, they're gonna be quick here. There's criticizing, okay? There's contempt. There's defensiveness and they're stonewalling. 
And you're like, what are, what, are, what are all these? Not complaining. Complaining isn't complaining different. Complaining is, hey, you know, you told me you were going to do this and you didn't do it. I wish you would have done that. I mean, come on, that's, that's complaining. No, criticizing is this. You never do what you said you were going to do. Isn't there a difference in the two? Like criticizing is that. You never do what you say you were going to do. And when you find that in your marriage, there's a consistency of what? A critical spirit in your marriage. And it needs help. It needs help right now. Criticism then moves to what we call is contempt, where there's disgust, there's eye rolling, there's making fun of your spouse in front of your friends. There's, you don't think it's sweet anymore, they're sweet anymore. So you have to make little snide comments here and there and comment on their thing on Facebook in front of the whole world and say, oh, which you're dumb or did this or whatever else. And you're saying, whoa, that's terrible. No, but that's warning signs that the marriage needs help. And then there's defensiveness where we just say, man, I, listen, you spend a bulk of your time just defending yourself. You don't even listen to anything else. You just defend yourself. You defend your ways. You try to make it, you know, rational. You rationalize your ways. Of all. You just spend your time defending yourself. And how does it work? How does it work that way? And finally, there's what? Stonewalling. And stonewalling is just what it says it is. You say, I'm done. I'm in for the kids. I don't want to be in the same bed with them. I don't want to be in the same room with them. I don't want to cook meals for them. I don't want to grill for her. I don't want to buy her flowers. I don't care about her. I, I'm stonewalling. I'm just waiting for it all to be done. I'm just done. And when it gets there, you've got to have God there. We have to seek God. Seek God. And we got to fight. We got to fight for it. And you're saying, man, with all the fighting or stuff, we fight, you know, each other. But let me tell you, let me tell you where we have to be, is that we have to be healthy in how we fight, and then we have to acknowledge together that we're fighting an enemy together. When Christy and I go to a restaurant, um, we've done this a, a lot in our marriage, I mean, pretty much the whole time, um, if we can in, in the circumstance, is that we sit on the same side of the booth together in a restaurant. It freaks the waitresses out, and it's awkward for a minute, and like they're sliding glasses over to like, well, this is, what are you like, doing? And I'm like, no, I want to sit on the same side. You know, every now and then, just kind of, you no. Know. But we sit on the same side, and I'm like, no, this is great, man. I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not sitting over there. And for me, now it just becomes this symbol together, that we're together. We're together, we're sitting together. We're not on the other side. And you're thinking, oh, that's judgmental. If I sit on the other side, now I'm a terrible person. No, I'm not saying that. It's the point is, is that that's the point for me, is that I want to sit on the same side as my spouse. If I'm unmarried, I want to find a spouse who will sit on the same side of the fight. And I want to fight against this enemy who is trying, I promise you, and it's in Scripture. He wants to steal what you have, he wants to kill what you have, and he wants to destroy what you have. It's time we all sit on the same side together, isn't it? It's time for us to realize that, man, maybe we don't, we're not doing this the way the Bible's telling us. I'm not quick to listen. Maybe it's time to confess that today. It's time to come out of, I'm just in a church moment and he's making me feel this way. No, 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 you are a jerk. And you do need prayer. And this is the place to start. This is the place where you say, man, I wanna grab the hand of my spouse or I wanna ask God to help me with my future spouse. And you young people that are sitting up front, Young people here, you're thinking, we don't think about this, do this. You know how quick it's going to be here? And if you don't start thinking about these things now, then it'll punch you in the face when you get there. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, I wasn't prepared for this. Now's the time. Now's the time where we confess this to God and we change on how we fight. We fight healthy. And then we fight together against the enemy. We've uh, we got a cool thing that's not just for today. And we're going to keep it here. And we have two altar areas that were put together. In just a minute, as we're having worship and we're in our prayer time, this is going to be a moment where you're going to feel kind of uncomfortable. You're going to be like, man, maybe, I don't know if we do this. Do we do it or not? I'm like, I don't know if there's a question. about. I, I think it's like, if we need help, if we want to say, God, help us how we, how we handle, deal with each other. Let's get on our knees together and let's pray.
if you said, I didn't, we didn't pray together this week and I, we forgot about it, now's the time to confess that and say, man, we said we would pray together and we didn't do it. If you were, you know, if you signed the covenant and you're like, man, I'm, gonna, I'm engaged in this and this, this week you said, no, that stuff's nonsense. And maybe today's the day you confess that and say, come on, babe, let's go up there. Let's get up there and let's get on our knees. And you'll see in here, there's a place for you to do prayer requests as well. Maybe you grab one and you just say, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this prayer request and I'm gonna just post it up on the board. Board with some crosses, it's super cool. There's just a place, just a time for us to come up together. Maybe you're unmarried today. Maybe you're divorced today. Maybe you're saying, I don't know if there's a chance. I Maybe today's the time where you come up and you say, all things are possible with God. All things. He can heal my heart. He is the one who's preparing my future. So it may be for you today. I'm gonna pray with, I'm gonna pray for us, pray for us all, and then we're gonna open up the altars. We're gonna begin to worship. All the stuff that you uh, are used to, we're gonna do. And we're just gonna have the altars open. It may be a time where you wanna pray with your child. Maybe you have your child with you and say, man, I wanna pray for your future spouse. I wanna pray that you're hearing this, although we've never seen this. I wanna pray for you. Let's pray this morning. Father God, Father, I come to you right now and just praying for each and every one of us who are fighting for our marriages. Father, we don't want miserable marriages, God. We don't want our marriages to end, Father, with stonewalling. Father God, we wanna, we wanna be healthy. Father, we're all going to fight, that's the reality, God, but Father, you've shown us through scripture. You have been our Father. You've modeled what that means, to how to, how to, how to fight, how to be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to anger. God, if we do those, you've promised that that's what you desire. Father, I pray that, man, if there's hearts in here that are struggling with this, that are callous, God, I pray that you can, you can change that. We know you can. Father, let this moment in worship, God, move us to our knees. In Jesus' name, amen.